This week, the PCC Cup Series rolls into Karyala for round 10. Uh, some of you might be wondering why we're not at Brno. That's because there is some political strife in the Czech Republic at the moment. So we will be returning there during October, around the time of the Round of Charlotte. Actually, it will the race will be run on the same day as the Round of Charlotte, so drivers will not be able to do the double. And therefore, uh, it will there will be two separate points events. However, most teams have already committed to run the Round of Charlotte, and the only team I can think of off the top of my head that at has attempted every single race that will be running at Brno is Manticore Engineering. In other news, the weather in Finland has gotten increasingly hot as the uh, weekend has gone on. At the beginning, it was about 75 and sunny for the qualifying races, uh, but today, for the main race, the uh, weather is 87 degrees and cloudy, so um, a bunch of teams are frantically working to get their setups in order so they don't have engine problems for the main race. Your poll, sir, today is Nicholas Cordovo's driving for Griffith Motorsports in the number 39, and we've got trouble in the back. Coming to the green flag, we've got, oh, we've got a car over, we've got Pete Maverick over in the back, and several cars are piling in before the green flag even flies, as Corridovos is stuck on the outside, Christopher Loxanen in his return, makes a look on the inside, getting a good push from Clara Kindall, as Loxanen takes the lead in the number 73, but now Kindall takes a look to the inside, Kindall will take the lead, coming through turn 2 and turn 3, but Loxanen is fighting back on the outside, Loxanen takes a look on the inside now, and he will take the lead coming into turn four as he pulls away Corridovo's challenges for second place. But Loxanen continues to lead as now we're going to get a replay for you for what happened right before the green flag flew. It looks like Warzowski and Cockner got together and he shoves over into Woodard and Richard D. MacGyver and Pete Maverick goes over there. And we've got a couple more cars, Craig Jaysner involved, Chris Benson, Jacob Eichholz, Lenny Jacobs goes around and we're gonna go on board with Pete Maverick here. And as we pretty much see, his race goes, and he goes over. He gets, actually, uh, Woodard drives underneath him, but he lands on his wheels, and he drives away and will take the green flag. Uh, excellent effort from Pete Maverick trying to get this car still going despite the circumstances. As I mentioned before, Christopher Loxon has the lead. He is making his return in the number 73 car for Altoris Gessler GP. This is their second car that they brought exclusively to this race for Loxanen, who decided he'd have a go at it once more in his home race. And Loxanen is making the most of it as he leads. He actually made a title mount last season in his rookie year, but plans fell through for that late in the season when uh, unreli unreliability and crashes kind of put him lower in the standings, but now he comes back and he is leading over Clara Kendall, who also in her home race is trying to impress the crowd as the majority of the crowd here are Swedes and Finns as we're putting on quite a performance here as we've got Corey Dovos and Ossier have moved up into the top four and Chernov rounds out the top five as Loxanen brings the field through. Still lap one here, Ian Elias is running uh, mid-pack and Ramsey Cockiner behind him there. Cockiner. Uh, fed up with him, turns him into the wall, and he goes across the track there, and Lechleiter goes into the wall. I think he got a bit of help there from Piotr Yahi, and Lechleiter goes into the wall, hits the side, and hits the rear end of that car, but he'll keep on going. Strong determination from the American short track star. He won at Carbondale earlier this year, and oh, it looks like Woodard might have got into him there, but Ian Elias brings that car into the pits, as well as uh, Warzowski and Maverick. I believe it is a PCC Cup uh, mandatory regulation that you have to bring your car into the pits and Cameron Taylor has blown up at the start of lap two. Oh boy here we go uh, engines are already starting to go as Cameron Taylor I believe he still had his queue set up in expecting it to be a bit cooler here today I guess that didn't work out for him so much and he is the first retirement of the day uh, here is Nicholas Cordovos and he's pulling his car into the pits on lap two that he's reporting something wrong with that car they're going to bring that car into the pits, and he's going to put his car into the pit lane. There's Richard Dean MacGyver, who is dropping out of the race, but they will not be able to repair Nicholas Corridovos' car, and he will be done for the day on lap two. As we see here, Cody Deke, uh, Craig Jaysner, Chris Benson, Lechleiter, and Lenny Jacobs bring their cars into the pits uh, to get those cars repaired. Warzowski got his car back out on track, but 
He's going to retire here on lap three after getting that car only running for one lap after taking the hood off of that. Tough break for him. He was hoping to have a strong run here today at Karyala. Back at the business end of the field, Loxanen continues to lead over Kindle. Loxanen got this drive because he is currently driving for Altoris Gessler GP in the WSCC. They're going to make their first start at Miashkova Airport here in just a couple weeks when we head to Russia, and that'll be exciting because we're actually going to be covering a couple of those races. So uh, look forward to that, and that's actually going to be quite a bit of fun. And Loxanen is slated to run the entire season for this team with the same number. Uh, they'll be running Volkswagens in that series, and that's going to be interesting to see. Here's Anders Magnussen, and he is driving the 23 this week. They picked him up as, uh, I guess, the, by my understanding, the Zach Tech team is a bit strapped for cash at the moment. And he's running three wide with Barton Sandy and Jacob Eichholz for about uh, 25th position right now, as he actually started 41st, but he's been slicing and dicing his way through the field, so props to Magnussen as they actually decided to hire a decent driver this week, unlike Jim Zahofacker. And here is Ramsey Cockner pulling his car into the pits to get that repaired after a disastrous first couple laps for him. And uh, they're going to get that car fixed up and send it back out on track. But here's Preston Bell, lap five, and his car slows as he's coming through the few turns there. And he drops out from 25th place. I think that car is going to be able to get back on track. It doesn't appear to be too terminal. I didn't see any smoke pouring out of it. It might be a problem with the fuel injection or something in that car. Here's Clara Kindle, and she's moved her way up to second place, and she has closed the gap to less than a car length now uh, to Loxanen. But Clara Kindle in front of her home crowd, I don't think she'd want anything more than to win this race, as uh, Manticore seems to be pouring all their efforts into Kindle and uh, Osir this season. But... We haven't seen Louis Ballard anywhere near the front yet. I believe he's in the top 10 at this point, but he's uh, still a bit back. But Kindle and Osir are making a charge for the lead on Loxanen, whose car looks a little bit underpowered at this point. And here's Dan Lechleiter, and he's going a lap down on lap 6. His day's been a disaster, as Loxanen makes a move on the inside, but he's a bit slow there. And it looks like Kindle's gonna make a move here coming into turn one. And she makes a dive to the inside and Clara Kindle will take the lead from Christopher Loxon and coming into turn one on lap seven. As, oh, they're still side by side, but she's gonna clear him here in turn two coming into turn three. And it looks like Osir might be making an effort on uh, Loxon in there, but Clara Kindle, your new leader here at Karyala in front of her home crowd. Uh, the Swede is making quite an impression here today. Lap 7, and now Chester Benson is slow after he has inherited the 25th position. As he slows here, he's going to park his car on the ripple stomps, and uh, he's going to get a tow back to the pits. Tough break for him. Uh, a bunch of teams, I guess, have not nailed the setup here at all today uh, in regards to the oppressive heat that we have faced here in Finland as I believe the temperature is still going up. Here is Claire Osir making a move for second place on Christopher Loxon on the inside. I think she's going to get him, and yes, she does. Lena Chernow make makes a look on the inside there, but to no avail. Osir is the runaway champion uh, at the moment, as it looks like she's going to snag this championship even at halfway. She's got over a one-race lead at this point, so... With runs like this, she can only uh, she can really only help herself, especially since her championship rivals appear to be dropping left and right. As now, Osir is gaining on Kindle for the lead, but she makes a she makes an interesting move there on the inside. But oh, she pulls that car off to the side. She might have a problem. She gets that thing going, but that was a bit odd. She slowed up quite a bit, but Kindle pulled away here, and that allowed Loxanen and Chernoff to catch back up. I wonder if something's wrong with that car, the 11 car, because, well, that was uh, just a little bit strange. I'm not sure if she got on the gas a bit late or not to prevent that car from spinning out. But behind all this, here's Chris Winter, and he's running in fifth place. So with the leaders running like they are, and they're running away from him, uh, it looks like it's going to be a battle for a uh, battle for first and a battle for fifth. So. Chris Winter currently leading that battle. He's got Gaspar de Souza, uh, Louis Ballard, and John Bracci behind him. And he, here he's putting uh, Lenny Jacobs' lap down. And Lenny Jacobs has had a really rough day. But here's Clara Kindle 
as she has opened up quite a big lead over uh, over Clara Sear as now she's coming to lap Preston Bell there and uh, Bell got his car back out on track looks like they got that problem fixed as he's still way off the pace but now she's coming up to lap uh, Bell's teammate Chris Benson and Benson's been kind of slow all day I think he dove into the pits at some point as here Clara Kindle is going to pull to the inside on Benson and make a move. Oh, she's taking that way wide. I'm not sure why she's doing that. Oh, there's a problem on the 14. The 14 is reporting a problem from the lead. Oh boy, here we go. We've got another issue from the front and uh, a heartbreak for Clara Kindle. She really wanted to win this one in front of her home crowd. Tough break for her. She's going to stop on track and the problem would be terminal as she would retire from the race here with uh, quite a bit of distance to go. Uh, that was on lap 10. So here we've got Cla Claire Ossier. She has retaken the lead. And that's Leonid Chernov who's moved up to second place putting Ian Elias a lap down now. But Clara Kindall, tough break for her. She was just, she had this race. And I think Claire Ossier was gonna block for her but uh, her car just ended up uh, not being able to go the distance, but now Claire Ossier is the beneficiary and she can do nothing but help her championship chances by leading here, but it looks like Lena Chernov is going to uh, gain up here on her because of Pete Maverick. Lap 11 and Greg Maddox in the 78 car from 10th place. He brings his car into the pits. I believe this is a bit early, but it might be actually a scheduled pit stop. Yes, I think this is a scheduled pit stop because Chris Winter just pulled into his pits from the top five. Uh, these guys might actually be getting off cycle at the moment, so we're going to look into that. Daniel Lechleiter, as if his day couldn't get worse, he breaks down on lap 11 and pulls that car off to the side. He's going to park it there, and he's going to get a tow back to the pits. Tough break for him. His day could not have gotten any worse. Uh, Claire Ossier brings her car into the pits one lap later, so yes, these are scheduled pit stops, as Leonid Chernov does as well from second place. Claire Ossier, I believe, will lead that lap, and here comes the rest of the leaders of the lap later, Louis Ballard, Gaspar Souza, John Bracci, David Hetzel, Lewis Jones, uh, Lenore Scurry, Ike Durbin, Michael Grant, and Mikko Rantanen in the 64 car all come into the pits. Coming out of the pits, John Bracci, he pulls out, and hello, Dave Hetzel, as Hetzel just pulls right into the door of John Bracci for no apparent reason. I believe the officials are not going to be too happy with that as uh, pit road collisions are highly uh, frowned upon. Yes, I yes they are going to take a look at that, so uh, expect a word about that later on in the race. And here is Claire Asir continuing to lead. As you see, she's opened up a massive lead over Lena Chernov, who uh, Chernov's pit crew, I don't believe they're well suited for... Uh, well, doing pit stops as they're not really used to them. This is a this is a uh, rally team first and foremost, and Chernov's actually going to be competing in this WSCC as well, where uh, I don't believe they're actually required to make any pit stops. So this is the same crew working on that team. So uh, this is a brand new experience for them, and uh, I think they really enjoy doing stock car racing. As uh, as I walked by the paddock today for them. They all had huge smiles on their faces as they were ready to uh, take this track on. Here's Loxanen and he shows Pete Maverick no mercy as he shoves him out of the way as he's trying to work his way back up through the field. He is in, he dropped down to third place now and he is currently uh, trying to work around the lap car Pete Maverick as he's working his way back towards the lead. Uh, the, the grit and determination of Christopher Loxanen trying to get his way back up to the front. And here is Barry Juveno on lap uh, lap 14 now, as his car breaks down right in front of Andrews Magnuson there from 21st place. Tough break for him. All the Teneras seem to be having problems today as they've been in and out of the pits all day. But Barry Juveno is going to park his car right there, right in the middle of the racing line, and uh, there's nobody around him, so they're going to give him a tow back to the pits. I mentioned once before Louis Ballard in the broadcast, and he has really kicked on the afterburners after I mentioned that, as he's worked his way up to fourth. He's putting Cody Deke a lap down there, and there's Chris Benson uh, right in front of Christopher Loxon and holding him up. So uh, Louis Ballard really working his way towards the front now, as uh, I think he's trying to fill the void that Clara Kendall left at the front of the field. So he is currently 
really kicking on the afterburners, working his way towards the front as he is just flying around this track. I believe he has set fastest lap at this point. As here is Lenny Jacobs, and uh, as if his day couldn't get any worse, his car breaks down on him on lap 16. He pulls that car off to the side, and uh, he's slowly working his way back towards the pits. But I think his day is pretty much done at this point. He's already a lap or two down at this point, and Chernov will bring his car into the pits from second place, a little bit early for that. This is lap 16. I think he had a puncture on that car, so he's gonna get himself a bit off cycle here, and hopefully that'll play into his favor later on in the race. I think he'll have enough fuel to make it uh, by making one less stop later in the race. And here is Ike Durbin, and he is currently running in the top 10. He's running in 10th place right now, and this is a hornet's nest. He's got Lewis Jones in front of him. He's got Greg Maddox. He's got a couple cars behind him. I believe uh, there's Mika Rantanen back there, and uh, Michael Grant has moved up into the top 15. We haven't seen much of him uh, at all, really, and he's putting together a strong run here today, so props to that 18 team. They actually missed Hungaro Ring, uh, despite that team being more inclined towards road courses, as Chris Winter is currently battling with... Um, with Gaspar D'Souza for the fourth place, and this battle is really heated up. They've been going at it for the past few laps, and uh, Winter has been running right on the bumper of Gaspar D'Souza, but I think that's because uh, D'Souza got a little bit of damage. I think he ran into somebody on pit road. Uh, can't verify that at the moment, but there's Dave Hetzel and Lenore Scurry right behind this group, so uh, this could be an interesting battle later on in the race. And uh, Chris, Chris Winter is reporting a problem. He pulls that car into the pits, uh, good thing he caught it because he didn't lose too much time and there was a pit entrance, so he's working to get himself. Uh, actually, maybe this is regular pit stop because he did get himself off cycle here before. And here is Claire Ossier putting Greg Woodard a lap down as she pulls off to the side of the track. I think Claire Ossier might have a problem with that number 11 car. Oh, yes, she does. She is slow on the outside of the track. There is definitely something wrong with that 11 car as she, have, she suffers a problem from the lead as uh, it seems to be... Manticore Engineering's MO here at this track. Get to the lead, then suffer a problem as she pulls that car to the inside as she lets a bunch of the lap cars by. We have yet, oh, there is Christopher Loxon and uh, Louis Ballard as they are working their way into the image here as Christopher Loxon rounds the Kalela hairpin there and he will take the lead as Christopher Loxon re-inherits the lead from Claire Ossier as I believe he's gonna try and make a run to win this thing if the engine can hold out because I really don't know if uh, the Altores Gessler GP engines are strong enough to make it to the finish uh, in this oppressive heat, but they're doing a good job so far, so props to them. Here's a driver we haven't talked about much. Dave Hetzel is currently running in fourth place by lap 20 in this number 17 BMW with Lenore Scurry in the 69 Maserati right behind him. But Dave Hetzel, we haven't seen much of him at all as he's uh, uh, DNQ'd whenever we're not at a road course, it seems. But he's currently punching quite a bit above the weight of this car. He ran close to the top 15. I believe he might have gotten the top 10 at Hungaro Ring. But he's doing quite, he's putting together quite an effort here at Karyala despite having a pit road collision with John Bracci, who uh, the officials later ruled it was. Uh, just kind of a racing incident due to the uh, narrowness of this pit road. So Dave Hetzel currently giving himself a very strong run. Claire Ossier is back to 22nd after getting her car to the pits. Uh, she is quite out of contention for the win, but will still try and soldier on and get a good finish out of this car. Gavin DeGray is having a strong run. He's running in the top 15 by lap 20 with Jacob Eichholz right behind him. And those two are battling for position as Gavin DeGray, he's really been anonymous all season. He's been putting together a few strong runs, but hasn't really done much in the way of results. But he's locked this car into the top 30, and he's uh, really manufactured a pretty solid season, despite the fact that we haven't really seen him near the front much at all. But he's uh, putting together a strong run here today, so hopefully we'll see more of Gavin DeGray near the front of the field in this number 728 Dodge. As here we've got Michael Grant, another driver who's giving his car a strong run. And this car desperately needs it. And he's running in the top 10 at lap 21 at this point, running right behind Ike Durbin and Mika Rantanen. 
who's really set that car on fire, the 64 car. As he's given that car, I believe this will be uh, two top ten runs in two weeks at this point. But Michael Grant, uh, he missed Hungaro Ring, but here he's doing quite a good job at Karyala. So hopefully we'll see more of him as well near the front. Piotr Yahi, teammate to Gap. Uh, Gavin de Grey breaks down from 17th place on lap 23. He's slow on the inside as he lets Anders Magnuson and a couple other people go there. Tough break for him as his car just kind of stalls there on track. He's going to get a tow back to the pits for that car. As here is Christopher Loxon as he continues to lead over Louis Ballard as I believe Ballard has closed that gap a little bit on him. But Loxon giving this car one hell of a run. I did not expect to see this thing near the front of the field but he's managed to put it there uh, rather uh, rather convincingly as he pulls that car away as I think that Ballard did dive into the pits as Claire Ossier you saw there. He's about to go a lap down as we go on board Louis Ballard. And yes, he does pull that car into the pits one lap before Christopher Loxon and maybe he's trying to make a gamble on pits and try to get out uh, in front of him in pit cycle. As uh, here we've got Brian Gallagher slow on the track. His day has been uh, nothing but a disaster, and uh, the suspension failed on that car, so he's going to pull that thing into the pits, and uh, I don't think they're going to be able to get that thing repaired. As here we've got Loxon pulling into the pits one lap later, and he is going to relinquish the lead to uh, uh, Ballard at this point. And Gavin DeGray's good day goes sour as his engine goes on that car. It's a really tough break for him on lap 25 as he was really looking forward to a good run here today, maybe even a top 10 if he had kept his nose clean, but I guess it wasn't meant to be for that team. As Lewis Jones also in the 58 from fifth place, he breaks down and pulls that car off to the side of the track. Tough break for him. He was really looking strong here today. Maybe he could have contended for the lead if the cars had lined up, but he pulls that car off to the side, and he, I think, will be done for the day. Lena Chernov inherited the lead for a lap, but he'll bring his car into the pits here on uh, lap 26 and uh, he's having a very strong run here today as he's actually led a couple laps but all of them haven't been on the racetrack all of them have been in the pits but here is Christopher Loxon as he has re-inherited the lead as he's pulled out to a bit of a oh no the engine goes on the 73 car oh that was this was his one chance to win and his engine expires on him from the lead on lap 26 he was uh, just a few laps away from being able to just take the win away from Louis Ballard, but Ballard, he will capitalize and he will take the lead here uh, by a huge margin over second place right now, as I don't even see second place anywhere behind him on the street at this point. Uh, trying to see, if, figure out who's in second place. This car is in second place, as uh, we're going to get a good view of it right here. Uh, Lenore Scurry in the 69 has moved up to second place in that uh, 69 Maserati. Quite a bit of uh, questionable content on the side of that car, but to no avail, it is her car. So Lenore Scurry putting together a very strong run. I believe Gaspar D'Souza is behind her running in third place. As here, Chris Winter looks on the inside of Lena Chernov battling for, I believe that is the fifth position at this point. And... Uh, 56 is looking very strong here today as uh, he's been quite near the front uh, quite often, but he is off cycle, as I mentioned before, so he pulls that car into the pits. Another guy who's having a really strong run here is Dan Ferre, and he has moved up to 11th place in this 222 car, and uh, his teammate Greg Woodard has also moved up into the top 20. So good job for the two Lycoya boys here today from Terra International Motorsports. They're manufacturing pretty good runs, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see if both of them managed to net a top 15 if the race went their way and they don't have problems. So uh, good job, Dan Ferre. You're uh, really making a good run today. And uh, Lenny Jacobs get thrown into the front stretch wall by Pete Maverick as Maverick just shoves him out of the way. Maverick's day has been anything but... Uh, but conventional. He's been on, he's been over, and uh, he's still running. I believe he's in the top 20 at this point. And here is Andrews Magnuson, and he is currently running in the top 15 at this point. He has worked his way up there from 45th, uh, from 41st on the grid, but he's about to go a lap down as Louis Ballard's right behind him. 
but Andrews Magnuson actually showing some pace in this 23 car, something we haven't seen too much of lately with Jim Zahofacker in that car. Uh, so this he is doing his job at the moment as Greg Woodard in the ninth in uh, 19th place is slow as I think his car has a problem on lap 33. He was running in the top 20, but tough break for him and the Lycoya boys. He got a new sponsor in uh, Frozer Graphics Cards, and he pulls that car to the inside, and uh, I believe his day is done as that car does not sound healthy. Same lap, Ramsey Cockner has a problem from 18th place, so 19th and 18th, who are on the same lap, uh, both have problems uh, near the same part of the racetrack. So Ramsey Cockner, he'll actually be able to drive his car back to the pits and uh, hopefully get that thing repaired as Lenore Scurry has been caught for second place by Gaspar D'Souza who has gotten that damage fixed on that car and uh, he's currently battling really hard with Lenore Scurry but these two go back a bit as Lenore Scurry actually subbed for Gaspar D'Souza when he was injured at Mansfield but she didn't do quite so well there I mean she did finish but uh, that's aside the point she wasn't very fast Louis Ballard brings his car into the pits here on lap 37 as this is the last pit stop of the race but Lenore Scurry and uh, Gaspar D'Souza decide to stay out an extra lap maybe uh, trying to gamble and catch up a bit as the tires gain more heat the cars do go faster so hopefully they'll gain more time on Louis Ballard but here is Michael Grant and Mikko Rantanen having a good battle here for uh, I believe this is the eighth position on lap 30, 38 at this point so they're doing a good run, and there's Louis Ballard, as he didn't lose too much time. He is running uh, around with the eighth place battle, but he is much slower as his tires haven't got much heat. But he's using Ballard as a pick as he manages to get by Rantanen for the seventh position at this point. As, oh no, Rantanen's going to battle back, and that's a good battle that's going on there. Oh, Rantanen has to check up, but Michael Grant will get through, and he'll get that position. Good battle there, and they've... Uh, they're trying to work on catching David Hetzel at this point. Lenore Scurry decides to stay out an extra lap. Gaspar Azusa brings his car into the pits, but Lenore Scurry comes in the lap afterwards as she decides to roll the dice and stay out a bit longer, trying to gain some ground on Louis Ballard as Louis Ballard has just kind of driven away from everyone at this point as Lenore Scurry, having a career run today, brings her car into the pits. Lena Chernov would lead that lap in the pits as he did the previous two laps that he led here today, but Ballard would open up a huge gap and take the lead in what has been an utterly dominating performance by this 41 car in the second half of this race. Same lap, Jacob Eichholz would break down, headed into the Layla hairpin, pull that car to the inside of the track, and he'd stop on track just coming out of there. But they'd get that car towed, and he'd get back out onto the track, so he'd end up finishing the race in that 49 car. Uh, perseverance ultimately counts in this series as Ian Elias' car mercif suffers a merciful end just a few laps from the finish. His day couldn't have gotten any worse. Well, it just did, but as he pulls that car off to the side of the track, exactly where Lewis Jones parked his car when it was stricken. So, tough break for him. He was really hoping to get a good, strong run here today. But here is Greg Maddox, who has avenged his teammate's engine failure by running up in fourth place with just five laps to go here. He's been outperforming his teammate as he decided to start caring about the PCC Cup Series seemingly as now he has uh, really shown his teammate up everywhere uh, that he's qualified for. He's qualified for the past three races and in all three races he has uh, sufficiently demolished his teammate it seems so it's going to be interesting to see if they switch the two up maybe put Maddox in the 77 Cameron Taylor in the 88 try to get Cameron Taylor some more motivation. Ramsey Cockner's day reaches its merciful end as his engine expires. Uh, no cloud of smoke for some reason from that car. Maybe it's uh, just a general issue with that engine, but he'll bring that car into the pits here with just a few laps to go. Tough break for Cockener. He was having a pretty rough day and uh, trying to make it to the finish. Here's Ike Durbin, Dave Hetzel, Michael Grant, and a couple other cars still in a dogfight here for sixth position as they're really going at it for that position with just a few laps to go here. There's only three or so laps to go, but they're stuck behind Preston Bell, Barry Juvenile, and a couple other cars that have really held them up, and they're really battling hard for this position. They've been nose to tail for the past few laps, trying to get by each other, 
but all cars seem to be equally matched at this point as Juvenile makes a move and he uh, he pushes Ike Durbin high as it looks like Dave Hetzel is going to make a move on the inside for sixth place as yes he does as they go three wide coming through there but Dave Hetzel is going to get the position and I think that Michael Grant might have enough enough uh, momentum to get by him there too but no it looks like Ike Durbin is going to get a push from Michael Grant and take a look on the inside of Dave Hetzel excellent racing we've got back here for uh, the lower top ten as Ike Durbin really pushing his car to get to that sixth position and I think he will and Michael Grant will come along with him there on the inside but nobody would be able to touch Lou Ballard as he takes his second win of the season in the number 41 OK Soda Lexus for Manticore Engineering again career day for Lenore Scurry as she finishes in second place Gaspar D'Souza rounds out the podium Greg Maddox Two uh, road course races made in a row and two top fives for him as Leonid Chernov brings his car home in fifth. Ike Durbin, strong run for him as he finishes in sixth place. David Hetzel, I believe that is his best run of the season in seventh place. Michael Grant giving that car a well-deserved top ten. Mikko Rantanen coming home ninth place. Good job for him. That car desperately needs it as well. And Chris Winter, despite being off cycle, he rounds out the top ten in the number 56 for Lechleiter Racing.